Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. Now on today's show we are discussing the challenges for both parents and children because of the generation gap. What kind of challenges are our young people facing because of all the different aspects of this challenge? Okay, Educational that we've spoken about, cultural, religious, okay, political issues. So please as always, this is a show all about yourselves and what we want you to do is get involved phone us you've got the number on the screen you've also got the emails tell us what you're thinking have you experienced challenges within your family because of the generation gap i'm delighted to be able to uh welcome shizad chowdhury onto uh the show uh, a management consultant shizad thank you for coming on the show okay and uh i'll start straight away with you so there are some children out there who claim that because their parents weren't born in this country, that they don't understand anything. Do you feel that that's fair? Um, to some extent, yeah, actually. Um, I'll give you uh, my personal experience. Um, so um, so growing, up, growing up as a child, I did whatever my parents told me to do. I didn't really put too much thought into what they were saying. I believed everything. So they told me that Allah exists, for example, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the yeah. messenger of God. And I believed that. But as I got older, I started developing a thinking mind. Yeah. And I started asking questions that my parents never asked themselves in their lives. Yeah. And one of those questions was, you know what, is this true what they say about Allah and the messenger? Yeah? Is this religion really the right religion? Because I speak to my Hindu friends, they're saying their one's the right one. Yeah. My Christian friends, they're saying the same thing. So we can't all be right. So who's right and who's wrong? So I asked my, uh, my parents this question. I asked them, look, um, how do you know? I asked my imam the same question, how do you know? And they both had the exact same answer. They said to me, just believe in it. Mm. And don't ask these questions. And that for me at that age wasn't good enough. It might have been good, good enough for them mm. uh, when they were growing up, but it wasn't good enough for me because when I went to school, spoke to my teachers, spoke to my friends at school, they had something to say. They said, for example, that we can explain how we got here without referring to God, without referencing religion at all. Evolution, the Big Bang, that explains the whole thing. So that was a real challenge that I found in my life that I think my parents never, ever experienced. And they didn't really know how to, how to deal with that issue. OK, thank you. Um, well, we spoke about education. Um, being one of the kind of areas that gets affected because of the generation gap. In terms of, you know, there's a lot of cultural aspects uh, that are involved with the generation gap. For example, you know, uh, how a lot of parents from a cultural perspective, Bangladesh culture, um, you know, when it comes to, say, marriage, okay, they almost have a fixed age, you know, the, it seems to be on average around 25, 27, that you can't mention marriage until you hit that age. You know, what's, what's your view on that? I think it's changing now quite drastically. The new generation, they don't think in the same way. Um, previously, I never had those issues, um, but I know lots of uh, family, friends, they have a whole list of things they have to tick off before they can even think about marriage. Like, do you have a nice car? Do you have a house? Do you have a salary above X uh, pounds per year? All of those things. Uh, if they haven't ticked those off, then they can't even think about marriage. Mm. And that's not just from their parents, but it's also from the prospective bride's uh, parents as well. Sure. And so those are the issues that I think in our generation, um, possibly we faced um, and our friends and families faced. But now, uh, since the new generation, the second or third wave now, um, I don't think those issues are, hopefully it's, got, it's you know, dampening down now. Mm. Um, I don't think they're as dominant as they used to be. Sure. Okay, thank you. Now, Nasir, uh, in terms of, you know, we're, we're talking about marriage and the cultural gap and how it affects that as well. Say, for example, do you feel under pressure that from your family um, that you'll probably have to save 25, 30 grand uh, before you can get married and it needs to be a big extravagant event? Do you feel that kind of pressure? Um, ironically, my family is, like, like Mohi was saying, the, the drastic change over time. I think my family's... Um, well, well adapted to it in the in, in the recent in the recent um, past few years. So, what's funny is though, even though I don't feel the pressure from them, it's the idea that I'll probably face the perspective of an in-law who wants that. So, it, it might not even be the case that you you have that within your own family. You you might have just about got rid of that obstacle, but then in the process of getting rid of that obstacle, you're faced by the next one, which is, mm. okay, where do I look? 
And um, why do you think that's such a big problem in our community? Because there are young people who are, you know, they feel they're mature enough to get married, and because they don't have the financial means, they're unable to do so. And I guess it's that it's that mindset between the older generation, and the younger generation. What's, what's your I, I take think on it, that? you know, I think it works both ways because in in our parents' defence. There's a certain work ethic that's sometimes not grasped by our generation. So I, I see it amongst like university students and stuff like that. It's just everyone's happy to get this loan, eat off it, get a bit of education if they can, and then possibly start looking for work. Whereas our parents came from a mindset where there was always this thing where they needed to get to work. Maybe it wasn't money related or maybe it was, but the point is they knew that they, need, they needed something done and they were willing to work 24-7 to, to get there. Um, maybe it wasn't the healthiest way of doing it, which is probably affecting them now, but it was, it was still a work ethic that, that, that can't be bought. Whereas nowadays, sometimes we don't have that, but all of a sudden we've got a passion for, for being with someone, and that, that doesn't always work well. But then in our, like in our defense, at the same time, if someone is mature enough, and if we feel like we've, we've worked up to certain expectations and we know we are, I think we should be given that voice, you know, to where we're heard of, we might be able to, to step up to that responsibility. Sure. And I, I guess, um, coming back to you, Shazad, you know, just the last question on marriage. Um, you know, we live in a society now where it's much, I guess we, the previous generation where a lot of times the parents were finding partners, potential partners for their uh, children. And now in a generation where a child might go through the right Islamic means but might find someone that they feel is suitable and want their parent to then pursue that so that they don't fall into, say, sin. Mm -hmm. um, but why is it that that still feels like a challenge where if a child's gone, gone about the right way, it still almost feels like you've still done wrong. So how, how do we uh, overcome that challenge? Oh, how do we overcome it? That's a tough question to answer. I mean, I can tell you about my own experience. Okay. I've been married for four years now, oh, sure. and most of my family still haven't come to terms with what I've done because I've married outside the Bengali culture. So my wife is Colombian, okay, sure. um, which uh, Colombia is a country in South America next to Brazil. And we were, I was introduced to her through a mutual friend. So my very close friend, he married a Colombian sister. When I was about 24 years old, a couple of years after graduating, he contacted me and said, would you like to get married? And there's a couple of sisters I know. Actually, there was only one sister. He it doesn't run a marriage service. Though. No, 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 no. So, um, so we started speak, I, I spoke to her Wally, got permission to speak to her over the internet, and we spoke for a while. And I had a very clear set of criteria like he was talking about. Sure, can and I just come back to you on that? I mm -hmm. really do apologise, we've got a caller on the line, okay? okay. Salaam alaikum caller. Hello there, welcome, Salaam. Uh, how would you like to get involved with the discussion today? Um, I just want to um, ask uh, maybe Brother Shazad a question. Um, I believe the, um, the programme today is about, you know, there being a generation gap. And then how communi and you know one of the topics you know was communication. How communication is a barrier that um, maybe youth and their parents. Um, uh, Brother Shazad said that um, his parents they said that he should just believe in the um, faith. But um, I mean, can you really say that that's due to a generation that you know that's? I mean, wouldn't you base that on um, maybe you know people having a lack of knowledge or people being ignorant? In regards to the faith, um, that's why you know he was given that response instead of you know saying that oh because of a generation gap or communication that um, he was you know he, he had to face that challenge. Mm -hmm. So so would you still be fair to say that you know you could you could blame lack of knowledge or a generation gap? Or didn't you say it's more of terbiyat where you know um, you know parenting and um, taking religious religious education um, the importance from growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, for, for the child, um, you know, seriously, wouldn't you say that was the sure. problem there? Thank you, thank you for your call. Uh, so, I think. Uh, Shazad, before you answer the question that you're answering, I think uh, just to clarify, I think the caller was trying to clarify that whether it was a lack of knowledge or whether it's a generation gap issue. So I guess you could say it was, how, how would you answer that? So I, I completely agree with yeah. the brother. It is, it, it, of course it is a lack of knowledge. But I guess there are overlaps. I guess there are, yeah. I guess there are. I mean, at the same time, this is the challenge that they've, they've never had to face before when they were growing up in Bangladesh. I mean, there was no, the media, their schools, no one was really challenging their viewpoints in life. So they didn't have to ask those burning questions. Why do I believe what I believe? Whereas over here, we are asked to think about those questions. We're asked to be sceptical about everything, sure. ask questions about everything. So when we, 
when we face these questions, we're, well, it leads to a couple of responses. The one I chose was flight. Yeah. So I kind of fled from the discussion altogether. I lost confidence sure. in my dean, but alhamdulillah, I came back yeah, to the straight path. Right. So carrying on with, the, with what you were saying, so, um, so you married outside, and as yeah. a result... Um, so um, so uh, I spoke to the sister for a while, yeah. and she met all the criteria that That's I had. Right. Ultimately, I was looking for the mother of my children, and I want to build a group of future Muslim leaders. That's what I want my kids to be. That's right. Okay? And my parents had a very separate set of criteria. And I tried having some discussions with them, right? I tried explaining to them in, in, in a series of discussions, which I had planned out, that first of all, this is my criteria, which is different to yours. Secondly, this has to be my decision ultimately. Those, this, those discussions went fantastically well with my mum, okay. but the rest of my family members, it didn't go well at all, actually. And before I got married, I got a, I got a response from one of my close relatives in Bangladesh. And it was, well, this is what he said. He said, um, Beware of white girls. She's not white, by the way. Beware of white mm. girls because they're after money. Okay. Beware of Colombian girls because they're after a British passport. We can't apply pressure on them. Mm. We can't apply pressure on them in case she behaves, you know, in case of misconduct, sure, this sure, kind of sure. thing. No, I, I guess uh, I can, under, I can uh, see some of the challenges that you face. Thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. Now, Mohi, there might be, you know, parents who are watching this who might be thinking, you know, I've spent all my life... Uh, you know, investing in my child, the upbringing, this and that. Surely I have a say as well. I might not be able to communicate with my child, but surely my child will also try and listen to my expectation and what I would like them to, uh, you know, uh, fulfil in terms of requirements as well. Do our parents not have a right yeah, within course. our choice as well? Definitely. I think Islamically they have definitely many rights and we have many rights over them as well. I think there was a saying by one of the uh, Sahabas, um, the first seven years, you know, play with your children, the next seven years, um, teach your children and then after that, be friends with your children. Because if you don't, then you're going to lose them. If we're not friends, if we're not very friendly with our children, if they don't feel like they are friends, as Muhammad said, Nasir said that, um, he feels or many of the youth feel they can't speak to their parents but they can speak to their friends mm -hmm. and if our parents are our friends it would be a lot easier to speak to them mm -hmm. so I would say um, they definitely have many rights over us um, and it's sometimes challenging um, for us to give them all their rights um, especially communicating with them those rights and so forth and our own rights um, but at the same time it's a two-way game here you know they both uh, parents have their rights and children have their rights as well mm -hmm. okay so thank you for that um, Nasir, coming, coming to you, now we'll move on to, say, uh, politics and news and the culture gap and how that can have an effect. There seems to be, you know, uh, do you agree with the statement that some parents are more concerned with current affairs in Bangladesh than finding out about current affairs in this country and how it impacts their own children's day-to-day -day life? And also this, but they're more concerned about what's going on in Bangladesh. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't say this for like every parent from Bangladesh, but I can, I can definitely say what seems to be a lot of the general consensus. Like if you talk amongst youth, you'll get that roll eye like expression when they hear <laughs> about their talk, parents talking about Bangladesh and back home. And that's, that's because it's, it seems to be like we understand it's a, it's a general concern for them. It is, it is their lineage, it is their, their, their relatives. And I, I guess we don't feel as close because we probably weren't brought up there. So we, we don't have that connection with them. But it almost seems like they're, they're turned off to everything that goes on here. So a prime example would be, um, now I'm, not, I'm not endorsing any, 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 um, any particular answer, but like during the, the whole Brexit campaign, no one knew what was going on. No one seemed to be quite educated. But then a lot of them were saying, yeah, let's leave because we're sick and tired of certain immigrants or certain races coming in and taking over this particular area um, or this particular job. And... Like, you know it wasn't anywhere near that simple, but for them it was, it was black and white because they were so involved with whatever they were doing there. But this, this option had been chucked on them, and they're like, okay, let's, let's pick what seems to be the right option without any knowledge of what's, what's going on. Um, similarly, you find a lot of parents sending money back home, and like, they have so much money to send back home, but then when it's, when it's time for their, their, their children to be involved in education, oh, you're going you're gonna to take the loan out, ain't you? It's almost like a given, like, well, I'm not involved in that decision, am I? Like, you're going to apply for that anyway, aren't you? So it's almost like, what, like how come you're not up to date with what's, what's going on here and what I'm doing and mm. what my education is about? Oh. And um, 
It does seem to be that case, yes. Okay. Um, Shazad, really quickly before we go to our next break, but do you feel that it's also the responsibility of the children to actually take an interest in maybe uh, some of the current affairs in Bangladesh so that they can create that uh, communication and that relationship with their parents where, you know, they have something in interest, uh, something in common? I mean, I do take an interest in the current affairs of Bangladesh, but not just Bangladesh, any Muslim country, to be honest. And that's because I, that's because I, I, have, a, I have an Islamic idea, yeah. which is that the entire ummah is yeah. one body, and yeah. then one part of the body hurts, the entire yeah. body feels it. So, so you feel I feel a connection to the entire Muslim world, mm. and obviously it's a bit more of a connection to Bangladesh, only because my parents are from there, so I happen to know a bit more about that yeah. region than any other. And do you feel that when you speak to your parents about what's going on, it does create a much more meaningful relationship, and it helps, obviously, uh, talk and communicate and take that further. Of course, I mean, it's just one more topic that we share, isn't it? Mm. No, that's really about, yeah. good to know. Thank you for that. So uh, that's the end of the second segment. Do stay with us when we will look at ways that we can try and uh, reduce the gap, try and close the gap in terms of how to ensure that relationship between parents and children is sustained and it actually flourishes uh, and how to kind of overcome some of the challenges that we have. So uh, do stay with us. <laughs> 